Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming, in a sense, to St. Gabriel's, in a sense, during this time of, in a sense, of mourning, um, remembrance, definitely, and in a way of celebrating, in a sense, a life that was lived, you know, and doing that. And what's important, and what I tell people, you know, when they come in, think of the things that, in a sense, if whatever your relationship was with him, with Robert, think of what you learned from him. And doing that, and I always tell people because what you learn from them, because we usually grow because we're relationship people. Think about what you, you know, what you learn from it, and then put that and remember it. Put that in practice. In doing that, even if you're you humor or you take a look at yourself a little bit deeper, you know, what did you learn from him? And in a sense, that enhanced your life. It doesn't have to be big, you know, it could be small. But it's another way a person touches our life in doing that in loving remembrance. Because every time that you remember that, that person, in a sense, lives on, and that's what's important. So in behalf of St. Gabriel's, I do like to express my sincere condolences and prayers to the family. Plus, and I can tell you, being this age and older as I am, we have less years in front of us than we do behind us. So priorities, you know, for me, and as we get older, are a little bit different in doing that. So it's wisdom, you know, in doing that about what's really important. I'll get into that a little bit later in doing that. But my prayers and sympathies, you know, go out to all of you in doing that. Because it's tough. You know, in a sense, the way when a person leaves, in a sense, you know, part of the family leaves, that it, the, the line, in a sense, is broken. And life definitely has changed, you know, in doing that. We wake up, in a sense, to something different. Because the person, in a sense, that's goodness, the love that that person had, in a sense, is, in a sense, dissipated. And it's our job, in a sense, to remember and to keep that love alive. So we're going to have a service. It's called it's a Byzantine liturgy. It's a really a mass in doing that. So for those of you, it's still Catholic, just to let you know that. It's an expression of it. what I tell people. There's 24 different ways of being Catholic. Roman Catholicism is the largest, you know, in doing that. But there are other ways in being Catholic. That's why when you say the creed, one holy Catholic and apostolic, it doesn't say one holy Roman Catholic and apostolic. Because Catholicos in Greek or Catholic means universal because Pope Paul the, the sixth was Ambrosian Rite. So when he became Pope, in a sense, he became what they call, used to call Latin Rite or Roman Catholic. But it's still valid, it's just a different expression. I call it, think of ice cream, it's just a different flavor of ice cream. You know, so you don't have to be buried in your books, you're welcome to enjoy it. And then we'll have three speakers, in a sense, speak, you know, um, before I do the homily and do it. I'll do the gospel first, then I'll invite them to speak, and then I'll speak it toward the end, and I'll sort of guide you in, in doing that since you haven't probably experienced this before. I thank you for your patience. Okay, thank you. Mary, look upon us and favor her with your grace. We, your faithful children, are safe in your embrace. Do not let us perish, Virgin Mother, help us. Every Christian cherish who turns to you for aid. Do not let us perish, Virgin Mother, help us. Every Christian cherish who turns to you for aid. With sincere petition, our hearts cry out and plead. Even if we speak not, you know our every need. Do not let us perish, Virgin Mother, help us. Every Christian cherish who turns to you for aid. Do not let us perish, Virgin Mother, help us. Every Christian cherish who turns to you for aid. Oh, 
Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of my life and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the stability, church of God, and dominion of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church, and all the way with faith, prophets, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Archbishop of Mendoza, we are our God, and Bishop John, for the better or best for the act in Christ, all the clergy and the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our government and all the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this, he lost for every city community and the faithful living in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the able for the abundance of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by sea or land, the sick, the suffering, the captive, for their safety and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the servant of God, Robert, and in his blessed memory, and that is every transgression, voluntary, voluntary, be forgiven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That he may stand not condemned before the fierce of judgment, seat of Christ, and that his soul be come in the place of light and light for all the saints and just repose. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy, and reserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Amen, my most holy, most great, most blessed, and glorious you say to the Theodogus and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves to one another and our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Lord our God, mighty beyond description, glorious above all understanding, merciful without limits, loving us beyond expression. Look with compassion on us upon us, holy church, O Master, and show us and those who pray with us a rich your tender mercy. For you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is do all glory and honor and worship, now and ever and forever. Amen. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Sing praise to his name. Give to him glorious praise. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, O Savior, save us. Be gracious to us, O God, and bless us. Let your face shine upon us, and have mercy on us. O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us to sing to you. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Only begotten Son and Word of God, who, being immortal, deigned for our salvation to become incarnate of the Holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, and became man without change. You were also crucified, O Christ our God, and by death have trampled death, being one of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father and the Holy Spirit, save us. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim God our Savior, O Son of God, risen from the dead, Save us who sing to you. Alleluia. Wisdom be attentive. Come, let
let us worship and bow before Christ. O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us who sing to you. Alleluia. In the depths of your wisdom, O only Creator, you govern all with love and supply the needs of each. Now give rest to the soul of your servant, for he has placed his hope in you, our Creator, Maker, and our God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. With the saints, O Christ, give rest to your servant. Where there is no pain, no sorrow, nor mourning, but life everlasting. For you only are God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Please stand. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and forever. Amen. Holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Let us be attentive, peace be to all wisdom, be attentive. Save your people, O Lord, and bless your inheritance, and bless your inheritance. To you, O Lord, I cry out, my God, be not silent to me. Save your people, O Lord, and bless your inheritance, and bless your inheritance. Wisdom. A reading of the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Let us be attentive. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, no one lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be with the Lord of both, and the dead and the living. Why then do you judge your brother? Or you, why do you look down on your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us shall be given an accounting of himself to God. Peace be to Victoria, read of the epistle wisdom, be attentive. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The one who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides in the shadow of God of heaven. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. 
He says to the Lord, you are my protector, my refuge, and my God in whom I trust. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom, let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. <laughs> According to Saint John. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. Let us be attentive. At that time, on arriving at Bethany, Jesus found that Lazarus had been in a tomb for four days already. Bethany is only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many people had come to Martha and Mary to sympathize with them over their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus had come, she went to meet him. Mary remained sitting in the house. Martha then said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that, even now, whatever you ask of God, he will grant you. Your brother said Jesus to her, He will rise again. Martha said, I know he will rise again at the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. If anyone believes in me, even though he dies, he will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she said. I believe that you are Christ, the Son of God, the one who was to come into this world. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. Lord in Jesus Christ, please be seated. Glory to him now and forever. We would like to ask the first of our three readers to come forward. You're welcome to come up, up here. Okay. So, one of you three ever want to come first? That's stories and talk about growing up and you know I'm gonna miss all those family get-togethers that we had but, yeah, you know, looking at real estate or looking at cars or you know taking me to the autorama as a, as a little boy and you know I, we all knew he was wasn't feeling that well towards the end you know, I, I, I came to visit in December, and and he, he, he told me that, you know, the next time that I, I came, that I'd be burying him, and I didn't know if I should take him seriously or not. You know, he, he was very lighthearted. He liked to joke around. You know, one, one of his famous sayings was that I'll treat you so many different ways, you're bound to like one of them. <laughs> but... You know, when, when he told me that, I, I wasn't too sure if I should take him seriously. We, we all know he was going through chemotherapy and, and uh, you know, the lung cancer. And I, had I known, I, I don't think I could have done anything differently but to maybe sit down and listen and spend a little more time with him. And, you know, last time I saw him was on December 31st, right before I, I flew back home. But, uh, you know, I, I, I wish him peace and he's no longer suffering in his mortal body. Uh, he's free from that, that pain and suffering from, from the cancer and the chemotherapy. So, I, I love you, Dad. I, I knew this day would come, but I always feared the day. And, and unfortunately, this is the time. So I, I, I thank you, everybody, for coming out. And I appreciate you know, your support. And... I love you, Dad. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
left us that sweet morning unexpectedly. And so we wanted to save you and keep you for all eternity. We knew we couldn't keep you all so selfishly. For God had different plans for your eternal soul. We had to let you go as peacefully as you went, just the way you wanted, while you comfortably slept. You tried to fight the cancer the best way you only could, and through all the pain and suffering you endured, you never lost that joking wit of yours. Your smile and your silly ways was unlike no other. You could talk to the best of them, no matter what their level. Your family dearly loves you for all that you did. We will never forget, Dad, that you always put us first. Love you so much, Dad. time to understand and noble men even longer. It took a period of time to realize the goodness in his heart and in his hands that held our lives. It was through time and life experience that I came to realize the blessing of having such a man in my life. You know, in life we take photos, make memories, and create unique experiences each of us remembers. And in this life, some may have a mentor, an equal, a valued friend. I'm here to speak of Robert Stephen Pyden who was an identical twin, and he had many names. Others know him as Bob, Robert, Pida, Pete, Peter. And as a young child, you can imagine how confusing it was just to figure out his real name. But for me, it was not difficult. I was blessed to have been able to just call him dad. He presented me the frame of life, that blank canvas, and it's that hope and horizon with which we paint the experiences created by us. My father gave me this horizon to go out and learn about life and much of what it demands. This permitted me to become my own man. Now as the sun sets and the moon rises, and we lay to rest. The memories in our hearts of our friend, cousin, uncle, grandfather, brother, son, dad, husband, and finally the beauty of a true noble gentleman shall cradle us into a gentle sleep and charm us in our dreams. You know, as a, as a child, at night before bed, we would get on our knees and he would teach us how to pray. Now I ask this tender image be carried out by the angels as they carry him. 
to heaven. Earth angel, I truly wish to thank you for giving us thy gift of such a man in our lives. And mom, dad would do anything to be your everything. He shall be there always with you. And as your son, I shall do the same. Because when you stand next to me, you shall never stand alone. And finally, the loss we sense is his physical presence. But let us reminisce on how he loved and let us celebrate each of these infinite moments with one another by remembering the life he lived. Thank you very much. It's interesting, you know, how do you sum up a person's life in 20, you know, 20 minutes into that? Most very difficult to say to do. It's almost an impossibility. The best funerals in the sense that we preach is when we're alive and doing that and arrange our priorities in a sense a lot better. You know, I, being at the school, being at St. Gabriel's School, times definitely have changed, you know, in a generation to say the least that has come to be known as the me generation. You know, when many of us, unfortunately, or many that I've seen selfishly think of only of ourselves and doing that, when many, and I see, feel people feel entitled, you know, and feel there's an entitlement to what we have or to what we can get, in a sense, from others. So in times like these, you know, especially from what I heard, especially from all three of you talking, I can tell you I thank God for men like Robert and people like him, in a sense, that have character that in a sense have fostered values, that have fostered love, especially, you know, taught teaching you to pray, you know, and doing that. That's good. Not many people have that anymore, and that's a scary thing. So I commend him in a sense for his courage and his inner strength, you know, that make the world a better place to live by doing that. And I certainly know, you know, that this country owes a debt of gratitude to Robert, who entered the United States Air Force in 1961. 20 years of service, it's really nice to see him in his uniform, to say the least. You know, he retired then in 1981, and we need to often remember those people, you know, in the military, to all the men and women, in a sense, that I've talked to in the military, at least half of them, never, in a sense, heard a shot got fired, but they were dedicated, and that's what they needed to do. Sometimes, like in my dad's case, they didn't want to talk much about it for whatever reason. That's okay, I honored that. You know, and doing that. So there's an inner strength there. You know, we're moving on, we're living in the present, and doing that. That's fine. That has to, in a sense, to be respected, and that's fine in doing that. And we all know that our military, in a sense, doesn't just protect your country. You know, they go all over the world, you know, and they go where they're assigned. They obey their orders, <laughs> and they take care of the people in each region. And in one particular region, in 1963, Robert was stationed at an Air Force base in Japan where he met a wonderful lady, to say the least, and that that lady would end up being his wife. The two met, and they had a relationship that endured the good times and also the bad as well. And it is what said that, you know, said of Robert that this was the best thing that ever happened, you know, when he was in Japan, and I think all of his life. When somebody loves you, take it. <laughs> I tell people there's a lid for every pot. Trust me in doing that. If somebody accepts you with all your faults, you know, with all your misgivings and with everything else and still love you, I think that's an incredible gift. And usually what I see in couples as they get to know each other, what wonderful is they get, usually the, my experience, especially if they're celebrating later anniversaries, they love each other more because they invest in each other and value and they respect each other. And that's what makes, in a sense, a marriage work and doing that. You always put the other person first. Granted, you have your own personalities, and that's fine. You know what? But I still, even at 80 years old, I would still die for my spouse. And that's what they would feel. And it's even deeper, even better than when they first met. 
So that quality, you can't even put a price in a sense on that. You can't. So, so Robert mentioned too, you know, in doing that, that children ask him for his autobiography. The reason why, because in a sense, they never seen an American before. And I get it in doing that. Robert mentioned too that he felt like Elvis Presley <laughs> and people back then. And, and he's got wonderful pictures. I could understand that. People wanting his autograph and doing that. That says a lot in doing that. And it, it has to do that. And I think all of us, you know, especially you, to say the least, you know, from what I hear, I do like to honor the person as best I can and do that. Is a life lived. They have their own story, you know, he has his own story, and he made a difference to people's lives. That's what counts. It really does. So all of you have in your mind some memory or event, in a sense, or learned experience that Robert was to you. Gifts, in a sense, that he gave you. Words of encouragement, support, wisdom, and advice, and I heard it. And something that, because of him, made you a better person. You know, today we honor Robert for his special role in our lives and for the gift God has given him and us. You know, talk about a life of service, to say the least, and wanting to help everybody out everywhere he can. He took on extra jobs in helping his family. In 1979, the family moved, in a sense, to Las Vegas. And after moving to Las Vegas and retiring from the Air Force, he embarked on his next career and served a position at the United States Post Office. When I thought about this, he really invested his life in people. What's nice is that's why you're here. Robert, by his life, prioritized investment in people. He invested in family, which I nicely heard today. People and relationships. So, so why are we all here, in a sense, this afternoon? Because we either had a relationship, in a sense, with Robert, or a relationship with a member of his family. So when we think about it, what's a relationship? Well, it's a state of connectedness between people, especially, you know, those emotionally connect. But we're all here because of an emotional connection with Robert or with a member of his family. Relationships, I tell you, are very valuable. They're very precious. They are the most important things in our lives. You know, we are born into relationships. and There's a lot of sacrifice. There's a lot of time from what I hear, a lot of worry in doing that, and a lot of love for all of you, a lot of care went into all these particular relationships. And I think Robert definitely can serve as a model to each about how we should invest our lives so that we leave something behind that is of value. That's important. You know, each of us touched people in different ways. And he did it. And because I tell people, even I tell the kids at school, I said the only thing that lasts in a sense is going to be love. God created the whole universe because he couldn't contain it in itself. He created the whole universe and still is creating we think he stopped. No. It's because of the love and the sense he has and doing that he can't contain it. That's what I like when I see family members getting together, you know, especially the values and the memories. You can't put a price on that. And it's hard, and especially during a painful time, to remember all that stuff. You know, I'm going to miss this person who I love so very much. How now do I honor? How could I respect it and be present, you know, for, to my own family or to the people that I need to be present to? And like you said, we also know that he was lighthearted most of the time. And, do, and his favorite television programs or sporting events, definitely. Sounds like my dad. News and reality shows like America's Got Talent, Gold Rush, and many others in doing that. I don't know if he ever panned for gold, but I have. I would like to take a mule sometime and just go out there and get lost and stay out there, you know, and doing that. So that's, that was kind of refreshing to hear. Also, that he liked to play old records. Jackie Wilson, The Platters. He should see my collection from the 1950s and 60s, something that I share in common with him. As far as I'm concerned, he had wonderful taste in music. And no one's ever going to change my mind on that. That's for sure in doing that. And we know he loved his Marlboro cigarettes, to say the least. You know, in the early 50s, and here's a little, little ditty on this, naval officers, not Air Force, for some reason they put naval officers and livestock ranchers made the advertising scene a sense for Marlboro cigarettes. And in 1954, finally the well-known, what they call Marlboro Man, was introduced. Believe it or not, by 1963, he was the sole representative of Marlboro ads and doing that. And believe it or not, in the United States, because I could remember huge images of this, you embodied a local spirit, the spirit of conquesting or conquering a sense of the world. And looking at Robert's pictures, I could see why, in a sense, he would want to embody the strong, courageous character. It made a lot of sense to me about this particular image and doing that. And seeing that, yeah, because it identified in a sense a noble, a courageous, 
and a character and a spirit. And that's what the company, in a sense, as bad as cigarettes are for you, that's what it did in doing that. My aunt, who was a nurse, the first thing, she was into Lucky Strikes, interestingly enough. She smoked until she went into a coma. <laughs> and doing that, when she got out of the coma, interestingly enough, the first thing she wanted in an oxygen tent was a cigarette. You know, but like Robert and like her, it made her happy. You know, I'm not going to give this up. This is one of the pleasures. I, I'm going to enjoy this. And believe it or not, she did. It's her last breathing breath and doing that. So I get it. You know, I definitely get it in doing that. You know, it's like I said, it, it said that Robert wanted to go out happy. You know, if, if anything like my aunt, I believe he did just that. So, you know, like I said earlier, how do you express a person's life in 15 or 20 minutes? I can tell you it's almost impossible and it is. And the best way, in a sense, that we can preach in a sense of our lives is when we're alive and what we mean to others. And by keeping our priorities straight. So what the lesson, in a sense, should be for us is very simply, we don't know how much time we have. We really don't. Especially when dealing with people, don't get caught up in nonsense. I mean that as I got older. Relationships and people are most important. Things are not. The dust is always going to be there. Work will always be there. Don't get sidetracked like I see a lot of young parents doing. And that's kind of a sad. They miss the time. They don't even go to supper anymore. Like you said, you said all the times, one of the things I heard from you is all the times we were together when we were family. They don't get that now. I mean, half the parents are running around doing everything else. They don't even sit down to dinner with their children anymore. And that's what I'm noticing in culture. That's not a good thing, I can tell you that. You know, you know like I tell people, things are not important. Yes, they're nice to have, that's fine. They do make life easier, not a problem. But when things have priority in a sense over people, Friendship and love, I'll tell you, you're really missing the boat in doing that. The most important things are people. And here I'll share a very practical thing and hope this makes sense. A philosophy professor that I knew, I don't know whether it was his original idea, but I remember it illustrates what I'm saying. He walked into class one day and he placed some items in front of him. What he did is he brought in this huge, huge mm, industrial strength, like glass jar and doing that, which was really that. He didn't say a word, he just, in a sense, picked up this empty, huge mayonnaise jar. And what he did, we were all looking at it, didn't say a word, he proceeded to fill it with golf balls. He then asked all of his students if the jar was full. We looked at each other, do you want an answer, professor? And we sort of shook our heads, you know, and they said, yeah, well, it's full, you fill it up with golf balls. And doing that, so the professor picked up a box of pebbles. <laughs> And then he poured them in the jar. Guess what? He shook the jar slightly. Guess what? All the pebbles started going down in between the golf balls and doing that. Interesting enough. He then asked us if, in a sense, you know, if our students, if the jar was full again. Well, we looked at each other, and I remember, it's like, oh, OK. Well, we sort of shook our heads. Yeah, well, it's full now. What else are you going to do? Then, interesting enough, then what he does he get? He picks up, in a sense, a box of sand <laughs> and pours it into the jar. Of course, the sand, in a sense, filled up the rest of the jar. He asked us once more, in a sense, if the jar was full. Of course, you know, we're looking, and I'm looking at my friend Jeannie Riznar over there, and doing that, we all answered much more confidently, yeah, what else could you possibly put in? Yes, it is full. Well, oh, ignorant us to do that. <laughs> the professor, nicely, of what he did, he got out from the lectern, produced two cups of coffee from under the table, poured the entire contents into that jar. Effectively, that filling the empty spaces between the sand. And then he said, you know, he busts out laughing, and then he goes, he said, I want you to recognize that the jar represents your life. The golf balls are the important things. Your family, your children, people that you love, your health, in a sense, your friends, and your faith. If anything, if everything, in a sense, else were lost, and only these things remained, your life would be full in a, in a different sense in doing that. The pebbles, you know, are the other things in a sense that matter. He said, your job, your house, your transportation, your car, you know. And then he said, the sand, believe it or not, is everything else, the small stuff. If you put the sand in the jar first, there's no room for the pebbles or the golf balls in doing that. And the same goes for our lives, both yours and mine. If you spend all the time and your energy on the small stuff, you will never have room in a sense 
in a sense, for the things that are really important to you. Pay attention to the things that are critical for your happiness, and I mean that. Play with your children. Take time to get medical checkups. Take your date or spouse out to dinner. Or if you have kids, make sure that you have time alone. Play another 18 holes of God. Worship God regularly. There will always be time, and I can tell you, there will always be time to fix the disposal and clean the house. It will always be there. Take care of the golf balls first. The things that really matter. Set your priorities. I can tell you, the rest is just sand in doing that. And one of the students that I remember in class raised her hand and, and inquired what the cup of coffee meant and what it represented. Well, the professor smiled. He said, well, I'm glad you asked. He said, I'm very glad you asked that. He said, it just goes to show you that no matter how full and how busy your life may seem, hopefully there's always room for a cup of coffee with a good and trusted friend. <laughs> so he was reminding both you and me that the most important things are not things in doing that. And sometimes we get so busy, we almost go into automatic pilot. We do a routine every day and don't think life just passes us by. And that's kind of the sad thing. Relationship with your parents, with your children, family, and friends, you know, and most of all, God, keep those as a priority because that's what you're going to remember. That's when it gives value, and that's what's going to last. The world will end, but our souls, in a sense, are eternal. You know, when you go to a graveyard, you see, you know, you see the birth date and the death date. And there's that line in between. Boy, all the stories, in a sense, that little dash, in a sense, could tell, you know, when we think about it in doing that. From what I gather, this, you know, Robert lived very richly and left you with so much. And I ask you to please continue that of what you remember in doing it. That's important because I don't think to you, you know, you need to share that with others so that life, you know, that he gave you in a sense is reflected and remembered. That's the best way to remember. To continue to do what you said and remember and learn and share that with others. That's important. You know, death isn't the end of human, it, it's not the end of the human story. You know, what's, it's in the middle. The end of it, in a sense, is resurrection. So, you know, birth, life, and death, well, it's life, death, and resurrection. That's really what it is. That's what it should be for us Christians anyway in doing that. So I would like to give you some homework. Let us expand the presence of God in Christ by doing what we have learned and shared from his life in a sense to ours in doing that. And by doing this, I can tell you, he lives on. And we bring a part of him. We do. We bring a part of him and Christ into the world. I hope that makes sense, and I hope you continue to honor and love him. I know he's there. Yeah, don't be fooled that he's not. You know, I tell people, you know, we think it is, it's the end, but absolutely not. And I've seen too many unusual things, you know, in my older age, you know, to believe that there, there is a God, and I see him working in the world. It's us who need to be in that relationship, in a sense, with him, and love is the best way. Because if you really care for somebody and really go through that with them, hang on to them, cherish them, respect them, and live it out well. Basta. <laughs> In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. We pray to be We'll continue with our, our mass. Let us all sing with our whole song and our whole life. Let us say. Pray for the people who are present away. 
nature green abundant mercy for those who showed us mercy and for Christians of the true faith. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For you are merciful and loving God and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Bishop and of Bonnet William, our God, I mean Bishop John, the entire priest and diacon and monastic order, our civil authorities, and all in the service of our country, the noble and ever memorable founders and benefactors of this holy church, for the eternal and blessed memory of Robert, who we remember today, and all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. Father, 
through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered, and was buried. He rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he is coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, together with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I profess one baptism for the remission of sins. I expect the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand, all right, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive to our glory and upright in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and by the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit, let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and just. It is proper and just to sing you, to bless you, to praise you, to thank you, to worship you in every place of your dominion. For you are God, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing, and ever the same. You and your living God send your Holy Spirit. You brought us out of non existence into being, and again raised us up, and we have fallen, and left nothing undone. You brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you, and your only be God send your Holy Spirit, for all that we know and that we do not know, for the manifest and hidden benefits bestowed on us. We also thank you for the synergy which are pleased to accept of our hands. Even though this have before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim, seraphim, six winged many eyes, we love thunder wings. Sing, shouting, crying aloud, and sing a triumphal hymn. Sacrifice and we implore, pray 
tree to sit down and only spread upon us the bodies he has slain before us and make this bread the precious body of your Christ and that which is in this chalice of precious blood of your Christ changing them by your Holy Spirit that for those who partake of them may become by the spirit of vigilance the remission of sins that commit the Holy Spirit the boldness of the heavenly kingdom and confidence in you not judgment or condemnation Moreover, we offer this spiritual sacrifice for those departed in the faith, the forefathers, fathers, patriots, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and we just respond to perfection in the faith, especially for most holy, most fair, most blessed, and glorious lady, that they have done this in ever Virgin Mary. It is truly proper to glorify you, O Veil blessed, immaculate, and the mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, who a virgin gave birth to God the Word. You truly, the Theotokos, we magnify. I'm on the verse of every member, like Father Francis, Pope of Rome, our most from our Archbishop, and at the bottom of my God, the Bishop John, Preserve the holy church as a peace of now for many years, as they may be part of the word of your truth. And remember all your people. Remember, Lord, to say Las Vegas, in which we dwell in every city community and the faithful living in them. <coughs> remember, Lord, those who travel by sin land, the sick, the suffering, the captive, and grant them salvation. Remember, Lord, those who be offerings and be formed to these holy churches, and those who remember the poor of all of us send down your mercies. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most holy and magnificent name. All the Son and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. And the first our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Now that we have to remember all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the blessed gets offered and consecrated that our God who loves us all may receive. The most holy and heavenly mystical altar, as a rule of our spiritual fragrance, and send down upon us in return. In the mind, grace, and gift, Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Asking for unity in the faith, Lord, give me the Holy Spirit. Let us commit ourselves to one another and our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. To you, O Master, love us all. We commit our life and openly and for our pain and treat you. Make us free to partake with the clear conscience and heavenly not some mysteries from the sacred and spiritual altar. May they bring about the remission of sins, the pardon of transgression, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence in you, not judgment or condemnation. And make us for your master, that we may with confidence and without condemnation, there call you Father God of heaven and say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom of the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. By your heads to the Lord. To you, O Lord. We give you thanks, O invisible King, for by your measure of power we have fashioned all things in the greatness of your mercy, and brought all things out of non-existence into being. Look down from heaven, O Master, upon those who bow their heads to you, but you do not bow to flesh and bow to the awesome God. Therefore, Master, may smooth and good of all the path that lies ahead. According to the elite, sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, cure those who are in single position of souls and bodies. Through the grace and mercy of loving kindness, and real be God's with whom we are blessed, together with all the life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Glory of 
Approach with the fear of God and with faith. Yes, it is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has revealed himself to us. So the God is the most special of the Lord because we should be sensitive to the life of the last day. Amen. So the God is the most special of the Save, O God, your people, and bless your inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith. And we worship the undivided Trinity. For the Trinity has saved us. Blessed are always now and ever and forever. We may sing of your glory, 
sing of your glory, for you have deemed us worthy to partake of your holy, divine, immortal, pure and life-creating mysteries. Keep us in your holiness so that all the day long we may live according to your truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please stand. Arise, now that we have received the divine, only most printable, of every life being lost in the mysteries of Christ. Let us rhythmically thank the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We thank, O Master, benefactor of our souls who love us all, that this day have made us worthy of eternal mysteries. Through the prayers and intercessions of the glorious Lamb, of us and ever, Virgin Mary, and of all your saints. Make straight our path and for us all, and give you God a life and say, God our steps. For you are sanctification, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm going to do a special blessing, in a sense, for the body and for the casket in doing that. And then you're most welcome to come to briefly come up and pay your respects, and then we'll proceed, in a sense, to the, the, to the funeral to the funeral grounds. Thank you. The blessed Lord be upon you through His grace, loving kindness, always, now, and ever, and forever. Cry to God, risen from the dead, have mercy in us, and save us in the prayers of His most pure Mother, of the Holy Voice, illustrious Apostle, of the Holy Father, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, the patron of the church, Saint Gabriel, to the prayers of all the saints, for Christ is good and loves us all. Amen. In blessed repose, grant, O Lord, eternal rest, your departed servant Robert, and remember him forever. to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Master, Lord and God, through whose mercy faithful souls are given rest, bless this casket of your servant Robert, and send your holy angel to guard it, so that the body which shall be placed in it may receive a resting place until its resurrection at your second coming, and may his soul, absolved of all sin, be granted eternal happiness in your heavenly and holy kingdom, for you are the King of peace, and we give glory to you, and your Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. May this casket be blessed and this bond be blessed and sanctified through the sprinkling of this holy water. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That concludes the Mass. You're most welcome to come up, and if you wish to pay your respects. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for coming. On behalf of Paul Mochway, we are so grateful and honored to have him in our chair. We extend to you, of course, our condolences. The moment we're going to close the casket, and of course, we'll take my female coach for our cemetery. That's at 7600 Southeastern. That's just the other side of Forum Springs. Mm -hmm. We just at the doorway, uh, and uh, because of the, of the narrow uh, area, my partner and I will bring the casket to you. Thank <laughs> you.